If you've been scheduled for a dry eye evaluation, you might be asking yourself, but why do I have to come in for a separate office visit to evaluate dry eye? And how's that even gonna be different from an annual eye exam? Today, I'm gonna to be explaining why it's so different and why we have our patients come back for a dedicated dry eye evaluation. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to eye school with me, Dr. D. Welcome. Today, I'm detailing what a dry eye evaluation looks like. Before we get started, this channel is all about eye education, and I love creating this community of pupils. If you're here for the dry eye content, make sure that you check out the playlist I have on all things dry eye. Since there are so many metrics with which to grade dry eye, it's best to have a completely separate appointment from your annual eye exam so that we can pay attention to just your dry eye disease. So now you're wondering what all is involved in grading your dry eye and what to expect at your appointment. Well, I'm gonna break it down for you. In general, all eye exams come down to what we call SOAP. So I'm gonna introduce you to something called SOAP. Soap is not just for getting yourself clean. Soap is actually um, an exam template that doctors use across eye care and medical doctors use this as well. But soap stands for subjective, objective, assessment, and plan. Just about any exam that we will do comes down to soap. Now we take subjective measures, those are things you tell us, along with objective measures, those are things we see, and then we come up with our assessment and plan. So as it pertains to a dry eye evaluation, let's use the SOAP format to talk about what you can expect during your exam. So first, the subjective or things you tell us. So with this, we're gonna get a detailed history from you. We wanna know all of your symptoms, when you experience them. Is there anything that you do that makes them feel better? Or are you aware of any specific things that make them feel worse? We'll want to know what medications you're on, what medications you've tried in the past for dry eye that didn't work, and the list goes on. These things help us understand your specific case because everybody's case with dry eye is different. Some people have dryness at the end of the day after they've been on computer, while others have it when they wake up first thing in the morning. So this subjective portion is critical. We also have you do a dry eye questionnaire. So this gives us an actual quantifiable symptom score so that we can have data on how affected you are by your dry eye on a daily basis. In my office, we use the OSDI scale, but other doctors can use subjective surveys like a speed score, and there are others. I really like these surveys. They're not perfect, but they do give us a number. Having a number allows us to revisit that survey after your treatment and find out what your subjective experience has done. And hopefully it's improved and we see those numbers on your, your dry eye surveys, surveys. <laughs> Hopefully, as we go through treatment, those numbers on your dry eye surveys improve and go down, improving your symptoms and your day-to-day -day, um, life. The second part of a dry eye evaluation is the objective or the things that we can measure. So typical objective things in a dry eye evaluation, of course, we're always gonna check vision, often we'll check pressure. And then in my office, we start by checking your corneal sensitivity. So knowing whether or not the nerves on the front surface of your eyes are functioning properly gives us a lot of information about how long-standing your dry eye disease is, um, maybe if you have prior surgery or other comorbidities affecting your dry eye. For instance, in diabetics, it's common or, or possible to have reduction in corneal sensitivity. So these tests give me a lot of information about the actual function of your cornea, um, and its ability to you know, develop good tears on its own. That information can affect what medicines that I prescribe. The next thing we're doing is testing the tears for either inflammation or osmolarity. So your doctor may do a test of your actual tears. We use a test called Inflamadry that looks for MMP9s, but some doctors do a test called 
tear lab and tear lab measures the osmolarity of your tears but these are all really helpful in understanding your tear chemistry and how that's impacting inflammation at your ocular surface next we look at the Schirmer test to look at the volume of tears you produce so we know if you're making enough dry eye disease is an inflammatory disease process that's multifactorial and can present in many different ways as such, your doctor is not only looking at your tears, but will also look at your eyelids, your lid margins, your lashes, to look for any signs of anterior and posterior blepharitis, which I did a whole video about that I'll link above. We're also looking for telangiectasia, which can be a sign of ocular rosacea. In my exam, I grade every single aspect of your eyes, your anterior blepharitis, your posterior blepharitis, your lid margin, how many of your glands express oil, the inflammation on your conjunctiva. We're also looking at your lid mechanics and dynamics to check for an incomplete closing of the lid, incomplete blinking. Some offices have specialized diagnostic equipment for this, like the Oculus 3M or the MyBox. There's even topographers that can measure the tears in the lids and how the lids interact. In addition with the lids, we're looking for distressed meibomian glands, lid notching that would indicate that the gland underneath is not doing so well. In my office, I have a firefly slit lamp and so I can show you the entire exam and everything that I'm seeing, you can see as well. And many doctors will have that type of technology, especially if you're seeing a dry eye specialist. When it comes to the meibomian glands, we use specialized images to take a look at them and grade them and assess what kind of stress they're under. So I'm using infrared images of the meibomian glands um, and we can link a video up above where I talk all about the meibomian glands and what they should look like and what they look like when they're not doing so hot. I also express those glands, like I said earlier, to see how they're functioning and what kind of oil is coming out of them. Your doctor is also going to examine your cornea, the front surface of your eye as well. So to do this in our office, we instill dye in your tears and we use special settings on our slit lamp to make those tears glow green. This is good old fashioned fluorescein dye that's been used for many, many, many years, probably 50 or more years in eye care. But some doctors use another dye called lysamine green. What we're looking for is corneal staining. So dry spots and damaged areas caused by dry eye will glow with the use of these special dyes. We're also looking for tear breakup time. So by having you blink and then hold your eyes open, if your doctor's ever done that to you, they're not just trying to, you know, see how long you can keep your eyes open. They're actually looking to see how well your tears hold up and they should hold up for a good 10 to 15 seconds. However, in many of my dry eye patients, we find that those tears are breaking up and instantly or within a few seconds, which just is a, an indicator that you're dry. You're dry all day long if your tears are evaporating very quickly. Having a fast tear breakup time is not good and indicates that your meibomian glands are not releasing oil like they're designed to do. Once your doctor has compiled these subjective and objective measures, they're gonna be using their own clinical judgment to combine your input and their findings into a digestible treatment plan that builds upon what you've maybe already been doing at home and addresses the most critical complaints and issues and diagnoses that they've found. Often this process and the goal is getting you from severe dry eye down to moderate or moderate down to mild. We really wanna make an impact on your day-to-day -day experience, but that takes a stepwise methodically planned approach that we use very incrementally and it incrementally impacts your ocular surface health over a period of at least six months. So my more severe patients that are coming in for these dry eye evaluations, I always try to tell them, you gotta give me six to eight months to, to start to turn the corner on this. So the keeping in mind, it's very imperative to come back for follow-ups, give feedback on the therapeutic in interventions that your doctor has Im implemented, and have patience with the process. In a lot of cases, it took maybe three or five or 10 or 25 years for your eyes to get this inflamed. And so it won't necessarily get better in just a week or so. Keeping up with at-home treatments is critical. 
And for a better understanding of the treatment ongoing, I have a video coming up about my treatment philosophy with dry eye and some of the what I call buckets I draw from when I'm coming up with treatment plans for patients. So if you have dry eye, it's definitely, um, it's chronic and progressive low-grade inflammation in your eyes. It can be so disruptive to your day-to-day -day life. And it's a tough, tough thing. And, and a lot of my work on this channel is, you know, to help you guys with that. So make sure to check out the playlist below. Make sure to tune in next week when I talk about my dry eye buckets. And leave comments down below because this community has a lot of folks with dry eye in it and I think we can all help each other and I also love hearing y'all's patient stories as well. That is it for today's iSchool lesson. I will see you next time. Class is dismissed.